Broadcasting live from the offices of policebackground.net. This is the Police Applicant Podcast with your host, Ken Royball. Hey, everyone. Uh, I know you got thrown off with the intro of Ken being the host today, but we're flipping roles today. <laughs> Ken's actually taking the, the spot of co-host today. Uh, this is your host, Donovan Hevener. Um, we're doing something a little bit different today. We're going to start uh, reaching out to recruiters around the country, um, giving them an opportunity to let all of our listeners know what they have to offer for departments. And we've got some recruiter, recruiters who are doing some great things out there. Um, so this is going to be something we're going to try to do more often. Um, today, um, I reached out to a department that is near and dear to my heart because I worked next to them for about eight years um, and saw the the good things that they were doing. Um, and this is uh, the Fond du Lac Police Department out of the state of Wisconsin. And we have with us Lieutenant Ryan Williams. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. So um, this is kind of a, a fun thing. I know Ken struggled when he saw the name of the uh, the city, uh, Fond du Lac, which everyone does. Everyone likes um, to enunciate the do. Right, do right. Do Lac. <laughs> well, and, the, and, and the, the great part is, is I worked for the village of North Fond du Lac, um, which, believe it or not, is on the north side of Fond du Lac. But you wouldn't believe how many times people would ask me, so where are you situated to Fond du Lac? And I was like, well, it says North Fond du Lac, so we were to the north. So, um, But we'll get into uh, everything with Fond du Lac here. Uh, first, Ryan, why don't you just give us a little bit about uh, your time with Fond du Lac, how long you've been there, what you've done on assignments there. Sure. Uh, I've been really one of those lucky officers that have kind of had an opportunity to do a lot of different things. And I, I think that's really important, actually, now that I look at other uh, younger officers' careers to kind of change things up. Uh, um, so... I have 20, almost 23 years in law enforcement. Uh, I had a bunch of specialty positions. I was a canine officer for eight years in there. I was a school resource officer. Uh, I've been on the SWAT team. I just recently stepped down from that. I'm a firearms instructor, defense and arrest tactics instructor, basically everything but EVOC, uh, emergency vehicle instructor. Uh, I'm on the honor guard as a field training officer. Um, it's almost like you name it besides like detective and, uh, you know, a couple of things that I've done it. And I really like that because I've been able to just kind of change up, keep my career fresh. And, uh, and now it's kind of about sharing that knowledge to the next generation. So, um, it's really kind of a cool thing. So when you say you've done just about everything, I think you've just about checked off just about every <laughs> box. <laughs> At least I would say at least for what the old time officers can do, you know, that have been around for 20 plus years. There are new positions that are coming out that, you know, unfortunately, you know, you, you've passed those positions. You can't get back to them now. Everyone so. asked me what my favorite role was. And, and honestly, it's whatever I'm doing right now has been my favorite. Uh, I can honestly say that because I love canine. Thought going to be anything better than I got in the schools. I love that. Just mm -hmm. little different things like that. And actually mm -hmm. right now what I'm doing, I love the most, but, uh, I'm a little impartial because I'm still doing it. And it's, uh, I mean, as we're going to hear, uh, it's kind of being what I'm creating right now. So it's, you you really have a, a, a say in what the future of the department is going to be. So Right, right. And and I mean, just looking at what you are doing recruiting wise right now, the stuff you're putting out, um, it's very evident that you love what you're doing and what you're doing to create a, a very positive environment there. Um, first, before we get into the, the dynamics of your department, I I think it's important. A chief always kind of sets the tone for a department. Um, yeah, I agree with that. Um, and you know, we've I've had uh, four four chiefs now. I think I'm I'm on right now, and they've all kind of set their own. They've they've all had strengths and they've all had weaknesses, right? And uh, you know, luckily the you know we've we've definitely grown from the strengths and the weaknesses we've grown from too. That makes you a stronger department. You have to overcome certain things. Um, um, chiefs do, and as as they do in any other department, it's not an easy job. You know, everyone thinks that they can do it until they actually do it, um, and it gets a lot, gets pretty hard. So, um, I I I feel that our chief right now we're in a really really good spot um, as far as he lets people create, and uh, mm -hmm. that's a unique thing in law enforcement. With my 23 years, and I'm not saying my other chiefs weren't they were they they had their strengths, like I said, but like I've never had anyone that just says, "Hey, I trust what you're doing." I like what you're doing. Keep doing it because law enforcement, you know how it is. They want to put you in that box and mm -hmm. you're like, oh, you can't do that. You can't do this because, uh, you know, we're law enforcement. Um, my chief hasn't done that to me. And uh, that's a that's a unique thing um, from what I know in law enforcement as far as uh, 
you know, being able to explore your creative side. Right. And, and he's very active on social media. Cause I, I follow him. We're connected on LinkedIn and everything. Um, and he's very active. And I think that that gives you the ability to be more active, I think as well, doesn't it? Oh, definitely. In fact, our chief still runs our Facebook page. Uh, so <laughs> we run everything through him. Um, I'm kind of the YouTube or the, yeah, the YouTube kind of guy, but he's still in charge of Facebook uh, and uh, he does a very good job of it. Mm -hmm. we, we told him that he could uh, delegate some of that, but uh, you know, he likes to be in charge of it. So. Yeah. <laughs> so let's, let's talk about Fond du Lac. What's great about Fond du Lac? Um, so Fond du Lac, uh, for those that don't know, it's, it's kind of in the middle of like every, uh, almost everything cool in Wisconsin. Uh, we're about halfway between uh, Milwaukee and Green Bay and uh, Appleton, which is a large uh, metro area. We're at the foot of uh, the biggest lake uh, in uh, Wisconsin, Fond du Lac, um, uh, Winni Lake Winnebago. So we uh, we have really good uh, fishing celebration every year called Walleye Weekend, um, which is kind of our big festival. And we are like a central hub for biking. Like we have uh, like five trails that kind of start in Fond du Lac and go out in all different directions across the state. Um, we have a really good new downtown area that's just kind of like redefining itself. Um, I, I think we started at uh, kind of a, is a working class type town. We're home from Mercury Marine um, uh, that makes the, the outboard uh, motors. Um, so we have a really good, solid working class um, foundation to us. We also have a couple universities, um, uh, very diverse population as far as um, in our area in Wisconsin. So um, it's just there's, there's a lot to do. And if, if you can't find it in Fond du Lac, we're close to the other places that have it. So um, a little mix of everything. And as far as policing goes, um, I feel like uh, we're probably a little bit busier than a lot of our cities of similar sizes, um, but uh, it, it, but probably the same amount of activity as a couple of uh, cities around us that are a little bit bigger than us, um, which is great because we're not too big of a department where we don't know everyone that works here and we know their, their kind of idiosyncrasies and who they are and you don't pass a stranger in the hallway, which is a great, great thing in a department. Mm -hmm. But we're big enough where we have the tools to make our officers safer. So, you know, we have our own armored vehicle. We have explosive breach capability. We have, uh, you know, we have all the drones and robots and stuff. So we're big enough a department to have the cool stuff, um, but we're not too big where we don't know everybody's name. And that, that's like that's like my kind of uh, level that I, I kind of looking for in a police department. Okay. What's the oh. uh, what's the, what's the population in the city and and what's the size of the police department? So we're, we're about 43,000-ish um, in Fond du Lac. Uh, we have about 78 sworn, um, about 44 of that when we get fully staffed uh, will be all patrols. So um, that's about the size. So a smaller size department-ish, but like I said, they're kind of that sweet spot. And how many positions do you have open right now? Uh, we have four positions open right okay. now. Um, th those were... Um, uh, our city granted us six additional spots, so we're two into those uh, additional spots. They're not boots on the ground right now. Some of those are people that are in school right now in the academy, um, but it's great. Uh, we have a unique thing in Fond du Lac. We've had some critical instances uh, that actually got national attention um, involving police officers, one of them being myself. I was unfortunate to be shot in the line of duty at one point. Um, but what that did is it did foster a lot of public support. So we have a city... Um, which it uniquely very much supports it. And I was saying I feel bad for other agencies that don't experience that same kind of thing that I do. Right, right. So, um, you, so you have four positions open. So you're doing a lot better than a lot of departments around. Um, I, I feel like around this area, people are starting to catch up now. Like I think yeah. the numbers are starting to get a, a little bit better um, across the the people that I talk to. I, I talk. I talk to a lot of officers from around the state. Um, I'm kind of well connected through different organizations and stuff. And I feel like they're, we're getting to an acceptable level. Now, what happens in four years and five years, that remains to be seen because it's a different crop of officers that we're getting in here, right? The, the right. loyalty of coming to a department and staying for 25 years, that same department, I don't know is going to be there. So right. I think that's kind of maybe what you guys are talking about is now we got to say, okay, we've got these people. How do we keep them here? Right. Because the next office, the next the next department over, 
they're going to raise their starting wage or their wage up here, or they're going to offer take home squads. And then that's going to force, you know, you to catch up. And are the people going to wait for you to catch up? And we're going to be playing this like leapfrog game. So uh, you have to say what makes people stay there. And I think it's department culture. And that's one thing um, where I feel like we've been doing a lot of stress on is department culture. You, you have, and, and you guys display that very well on your social media pages, as, uh, which we'll get to as we uh, get through this interview. Because, I, again, I pulled a couple of videos that I think are really great um, <laughs> that show that. But one thing that uh, a lot of people, when they look at different departments, uh, they always wonder what the patrol schedule is. What do you guys run for a patrol schedule? Uh, right now, so we, we're, we're um, doing a five-on-three-off, nine-hour shifts. Um, our union right now are in talks of changing and going to traditional 12s. Um, so there, there could be a change down the road. It's going to be, you know, whatever patrol decides. Our our chief is open to it. Um, he wants, you know, that officer um, happiness. Uh, I mean, we run five different shifts at five on, three off. Um, it's not a bad schedule. I, I know some people like, oh, well, you know, I like to have the full week and thing, but the the having three days off every week, and in my opinion, is not a bad schedule. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not it, it's it's harder to change the schedule when you don't have a bad schedule. Now, if you're running like five two five threes, and then you're saying Let, let's go to twelve, yeah, let's go to twelve. Oh, let's let's do that because man, you work night shift. I've done that. And you get those two <laughs> days off. That that's like one day off maybe. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, I, I think we'll probably we, we might move to a change at some point, but. We have a young department and the one thing is when you start having kids as probably you guys know having a normal day like a shorter hour day is nice because yes you get more days off but it's those common things that you need to be there for kids it's that you know being being off um after school so that you can pick up and drop off you know usually makes your wife or partner a little bit happier that you can be involved in the daily activities mm -hmm. the making supper mm -hmm. all that stuff and you know when you run those 12s like a lot of people are doing you're gone for those days and i get it got more days off you make make up for it and you can make anything work but there is something to be said about having a normal life and uh you know officers we don't have normal lives but most people aren't off half the year uh, that's just how it is right mm -hmm. right yeah so so patrol schedules are always one the other thing is is they always want to know what uh, specialty units you guys have to offer? What kind of specialty, either if it's a, a unit you can go to or if it's a collateral assignment, what does Fond du Lac have to offer? Uh, we have a lot for, uh, like I said, a, a, an agency our size. So, um, you know, I mentioned all the ones that I was involved in. Um, we have a, we have our own SWAT team. Uh, we have K-9. We have a drone robot team. Um, we have a crisis co-response team, which is an officer and a social worker paired up together. Uh, we have a domestic violence uh, intervention specialist. Um, we have what we call a community impact specialist, which is kind of a, like a street crimes uh, division, kind of concentrate more on narcotics, but can do uh, other specific things. We have the detective bureau, um, probably a bunch of other stuff I'm missing out, like a, a negotiations team, um, which is kind of paired up with the SWAT team, but different. Um, a honor guard, uh, you know, we have our field training, we have our training disciplines. Um, so. A lot of things, a lot of things that kind of, oh, a tactical field force team. So, <laughs> we're, I mean, I, I told you we have like 44 members, like mm -hmm. everyone can do something. <laughs> right, mm -hmm. right. And that's that's the good thing. I mean, it, you do have a lot to offer and everyone gets an opportunity to do something. I think the other thing that is really cool about your department is um, you have, uh, they're called community service officers, correct? Yeah, so we have uh, part-time officers. It's kind of like our triple A's, our triple A league for baseball, you know, like like baseball. Um, but they're part-time officers. They basically do almost everything a normal patrol officer do, except the dangerous stuff dangerous stuff. Um, they'll take calls. So it actually helps in our call diversion program that you know we're thinking about our officers. So if there's like a, a vandalism, they can take that report and then another officer can do um not more important, but more important things. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. it's yeah. all important. Um but they, they staff our community events. Um, they do a ton of stuff. And what I do, um, so I'm in charge of that unit right now, is I train them to be cops. And I tell them day one, I say, I, you, you have an interest. They're usually people that have interest in law enforcement. I say, I want you to be a better law enforcement candidate when you're done with this program. I said, I will do whatever I can to get you there. So um, if they have an interest, I'll, I will, you know, like the SWAT team always needs role players. I'll have my CSOs. I say, hey, you interested in this? Like, yeah, put me in. 
Um, they help with our EVOC day and we'll, they actually participate. Like we run them through courses. I do a, a, um, an orientation week with new hires and I have, I do a whole day of defense and arrest tactics. Yeah. Come to our day, like learn, right. Mm -hmm. You're going to go to the Academy and you're going to get tested on this stuff. It's such a leg up on the competition when you already know what they're teaching. So um, I want them to be better officers. And I hope that when they do that, they choose us too to be an officer with, but if they don't, and, and sometimes it doesn't, you know, some people are County or your city, you know, it's, mm -hmm. that, there's nothing you can do about that, but uh, I just want them to be better, safer officers. And uh, I, my goal is to get them there. Yeah. Are and the, you guys uh, are the CSOs like the gateway to the police department. Where do you get the CSOs from? Are they specifically recruited to become police officers? Um, not specifically. So we, we just have a normal application process, but it's kind of like that. So, um, I'm hiring them and saying, will they be good, uh, um, future officers? And so it's kind of like our departments try it before that they, we buy it type deal. It's like the longest, uh, hiring process in the world. Cause we'll have them on for while well, they're finishing school. So I allow very flexible schedules so they can work around their, their school schedules. In fact, um, we do stuff like they do fingerprinting for us. So like uh, if you're doing fingerprinting, I actually allow them to do homework because they got to sit there anyway. And if we don't have like parking tickets to enter or something like that, they got they can do something. So I I say school first because they need their 60 credits to be an officer. And 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 after that, I'm just, you know, just keep on feeding them and, and mentoring them and trying to make them the best people they can. And, and, and I'll know. I'll know if they're ready or not. If, if you're ready to be a police officer, or maybe they're not ready for our department because let's just, we're a busy department. Not everyone's ready. And I, I'll tell them, and it's, it's having those courageous conversations and saying, Hey, you might be better off at a smaller department um, for a while. And if you want to come here, that's great, but get your feet wet somewhere else. And mm -hmm. uh, um, it's, it's just a really good way to kind of get an extra look at people. Yeah. And that's one thing, uh, Ken, I don't know if you know, in Wisconsin, you have to have 60 college credits in order to become a police officer. That's a prerequisite. Uh -huh. So, so yeah. that's why they, they, they look to the, the universities for that. And I was running a CSO program similar to what Fond du Lac had at a local university. And Fond du Lac was always my, my, my biggest competition with pulling people in, you know, trying to get them there because we'd fight over the same people. Yeah. So, yeah. I can, oh, go ahead. Yeah. It's, I mean, it, it's just, it's, it's great. Like we actually are hiring uh, one tomorrow and, you know, we sit them down and we go through almost all the same stuff. We do go through a normal officer. We issue them bulletproof vests and, and, and all that stuff. Like we get them ready. Uh, we have now um, finally uh, we've integrated uh, our, they actually have uh, computers in their squads. So we train them on, um, you know, the, having uh, being able to access records and stuff like that. We get them all uh, official like that. And uh, we would like to one day at least have them start handling like some crashes and like uh, private lot parking lots and stuff like that. Anything to get there, you know, and they love it. Uh, honestly, they're all sponges and they, the more we can give them access to, to get them closer to like that police work, they love it. So good. Yeah. So, um, you, you mentioned, uh, you know, how many different, uh, instructor titles you hold. So for Fond du Lac police department in a year, how much training is offered to your officers, um, in house? And then what types of trainings do you guys offer outside of the regular firearms, defensive tactics and that? Um, so the, I've been three years in this job and that is my passion is training. And uh, so I was in the school, I, I'm just going to back up and I, this is a long answer and I apologize, but I was a school resource officer and I was teaching in my school where my children, my kids, my two daughters were actually going to. Now COVID happened and I felt like there was more of a need for me at my station than at my school. Cause uh, you know, there wasn't kids in school for a while and I felt I was needed more there at my police department than um, elsewhere. And I chose to try to promote. And we had a, at that same time, we had a lot of turnover in our department. And I realized the opportunity that that gave me. Um, I'll say this, that I, I was not really inspired by a lot of our first line leaders that we had in our department before. Um, and I, and I don't think, I don't fault them. I think, you know, they might've been being beat down from both sides and they were just kind of maybe dialing it in. And I'm like, we can do better. And we had a lot of young, um, people that promoted at that same time. This is the time to make it what we can. So I went to nights for a while and I did training every briefing. I brought something, I brought something. And, and some of that training was not 
law enforcement related. It was just uh, leadership or teamwork oriented to try to give the officer something. Um, I kind of came up with this saying, and I don't even know if it makes sense, but I would spend, if, if I could spend an hour of my day for 15 minutes of levity for my police officers, I was going to do that. And what I wanted them to do is to come out of briefing and not talk about being forced over and not talk about like all the bad things and this and that, but say, Hey, that was pretty cool. Or, Hey, that was kind of goofy or, or whatever it was, but they're not complaining. They're, they're actually excited about it. So then I promoted to an admin Lieutenant where I'm in charge of all training. Right? So now I have that power to uh, facilitate that training to all shifts and I can kind of make it mandatory. So mm -hmm. um, I'm, uh, I try to get out enough training. So I'm not saying it's happening on every single shift, but even in the form of sending out YouTube videos with talking points on them um, that I can send out to my lieutenants and they can use that as a training tool of, hey, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? You know, is this, do you think this officer is crushing the target too much? What else could they have done? Um, so those are those are easy ones, but then I also facilitate training. So with that complicated answer, I'll say we have your typical, we do three in services um, every uh, year. Uh, we have our own range. Um, we can do on duty shoots. Uh, we don't do them all the time. We do them when there's a need, because right now we, we're getting Taser 10 implementation. We need that on duty time for other things. So um, we're getting, uh, we just got uh, optics on our rifles, which we were a little bit behind on. But we're, you know, there's a lot of this new stuff that we need that time for. But because we have those that five on three off schedule, we have overlapping shifts. I have the opportunity of an hour of training pretty much every day with on shift. And, um, you know, I, I don't always occupy it. A half hour is easier, um, mm -hmm. but I can do it. Um, I just happen to get a building downtown where we started practicing rescue task force stuff. So instead of re reporting a briefing, I had them report to this building and we ran, I ran two quick scenarios with the fire department. And imagine that, I mean, mm -hmm. instead of like having to send people to this or that training, I can do it right here. I, I we're co we're working with the fire department on an important thing. You know, when stuff goes bad, we're going to be working with them um, to help clear that communication. So, I've always got something in the cooker. I think training is super important. I look back at my career once again, not holding anybody at fault, but um, I didn't have a lot of training on a continuous basis, and now I. I don't think that's the problem anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. I mean, that's that's some forward thinking. I mean, that I haven't heard anyone talking about doing a lot of the stuff you're talking about as far as, you know, just starting briefing somewhere else and getting in a couple of scenarios during your briefing time. I mean, that's fantastic. Now, it does yeah. take a lot of organization. I'm going to tell you that, mm -hmm. but I had it pretty streamlined. I had them walk in. I had like three of my CSOs do a different check station. So I knew mm -hmm. I had it free and clear. And then we went right into it. And you got to like really concentrate on a couple, not, not the whole thing. Like I, I literally rescue task force. I started it. Okay. You're in this room. You just had an officer shooting. You just shot this person begin scene. And now right. you talk about, okay, let's assess all the patients. Let's do casualty collection points. Let's do all that stuff. And, and here you go. Yeah. Don't they call it like, isn't that like isolation where you just take a little segment of a whole yep. scenario? Yeah. So, yep. wow. That's, that's fantastic. So when you're talking about all this stuff and you talked about, you know, the optics for the rifles and all that, um, outside of the normal stuff that officers get issued from a department, everyone likes to boast about, you know, you get this from our department. Are there any cool things, extra things that your officers get issued that um, most departments don't get? Well, we we pay for all of the uniform, which is kind of a unique around this area. And I don't know how it is that like we buy everything for the officers as far as the uniform and the gear. A couple mm -hmm. of things like a, like a baton and like an extra flashlight and stuff like that we don't cover. But so you don't have to come and like have that. And then plus that, you get a clothing allowance to take care of all that stuff that we give you already. So um, that that's kind of unique. Uh, uh, like uh, we're one of the um, earliest departments to go to Taser 10. Um, mm -hmm. We're implementing that in fall, um, which is cool. Another thing, we're briefing training. Instead of having to take extra time during an in-service, like when I want to put other stuff in there, I I, ha I implement um, an eight-hour training in blocks. So the first block was a familiarization with Taser 10. I let them do hands-on and they go through a lesson plan. Second was online learning. They do that on duty. They just take an hour out of their day and they do the online module. And then when we do our in-service, it's going to be four hours of I can get it in the force-on-force -force stuff. I can get it in like the meat and potatoes and stuff right away. 
And because all that stuff is knocked out already because I've had those opportunities before. Um, I feel like department wise, I think a lot of people like everybody has cool stuff right now. Mm -hmm. Like everybody has cool stuff. We have I think we have all the important stuff to make our officers safe. The, I mean, the biggest thing for us, the game changer was just getting that armored vehicle. So that changed our tactics, right? Like we can be closer and safer on hostage rescue situations. Um, we train all of our officers to drive our armored vehicle, which is also unique in some areas. And I highly recommend that because we get that thing out right away. Like officers jump in there. And even if, you know, if there's something that goes bad, that thing will be there to do a perform a hostage rescue, to get an officer rescue or whatever, because we're not waiting for a, the right SWAT operator or, or admin to come in and, and move that thing. So um, things like that, uh, explosive breach is kind of um, rare for our, uh, our area. Uh, I'll say um, there's not a lot of explosive breach teams, but game changer. Again, I love being, I love that feeling on the SWAT team of, hey, we're not going to go in there, um, but we're going to take your doors off kind of feel a little bit like maybe I should come out now, you know, and then, you know, then we can stick robots in there and in gas and all that other stuff where we don't have to like put officers lives at risk um, for, for something meaningless, you know, obviously hostage rescue, different thing, but um, on, on all these calls where it doesn't rise that occasion, we have tools to make it safer for our officers so they can go home. That's, I mean, yeah, that, that having someone or everyone being able to drive that SWAT vehicle, that's huge. Um, and I know, I know the incident you're talking about where you guys really learned a lot from with that, you know, getting that vehicle out there and actually having that as a tool for you guys. So, um, that's, I've never heard of everyone in the entire department, you know, officer wise being able to drive that vehicle. It's always like out here, it's, it's an honor to be able to, you know, like christened as a, as a, as a knight to drive that thing. So, so we, yeah, we do it for our orientation. We, and, uh, when we teach EVOC, we, we have them drive it and learn how to use it and stuff like that. So. Um, they, they have a little bit of familiarity with it and, uh, get it out there, man, get it out there. Cause it's a tool. It's a tool. Right. Right. The other big thing that, um, everyone's talking about, especially nowadays, uh, the big buzz phrase is officer wellness. Um, cause that is so important in our field now. I mean, we, you know, when you and I started, when Ken started, that wasn't a big deal. Um, now it is a big deal. We've learned from our mistakes. So what, what is Fond du Lac doing for officer wellness? So we have a huge peer support team and we just added to it. Uh, I want to say we're probably at about 20 members of people that have volunteered to be on our peer support team. One, uh, something I forgot before, but, um, mm -hmm. and they're basically go to officers, the officers that, um, you know, other officers can go to. And, and the nice thing about having a variety is let's say you're not going to go to everybody, right? You have your person probably that you feel comfortable with talking with, um, and in a way, I, um, you know, I have a, I have a recruit retention specialist the office is right next to mine and me. I feel like I'm kind of peer support, even though I'm not officially either, but I'm kind of on the journey with these officers, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm, I'm from day one and helping them through the process. So, uh, I feel like I'm approachable, um, ish, uh, so, uh, they can come to me as well. But the nice thing about having someone like me, I've had a lot of experience and dealt with, I've had ups and downs in my career, just like anybody else who's been in the career for 23 years so i probably have a relatable story or, or or at least some good advice to give you to get you over the hump um i i do like that there is there is that concentration another thing that we do is once a year we do do um mandatory um meetings with uh an actual um uh, uh i, I want to say it's just a counselor um mm -hmm. but uh you don't have to say anything you can go in there and say i'm good and, and walk out um, but we, it is mandatory that you at least walk in that room. And I know some people have hard feelings about that. Um, but I, I believe in it. Um, uh, I, I, I come from the old school and I brushed myself and said, I'm good. And I haven't been good, you know? Um, and I like that, the, that we're at least increasing that likelihood that if that officer is dealing with something, we have at least tried to reach out in a different way that they can open up to that person. And, and honestly, if that saves one person, because we know what officer suicide rates are, if that saves one person, that's worth it. You know, mm -hmm. like just to have that outlet of someone that they can trust and talk to. And um, so we do a lot of stuff like that. But you've seen you've seen our YouTube um, stuff, um, all that stuff that's out there. We actually have an internal network, too, of stuff that we do um, just to kind of lighten the mood. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I did. Uh, I do a segment. Um, it's kind of like those Budweiser commercials where it's real men of genius, but I call it real heroes of Fond du Lac. And I kind of highlight our officer. Like our, our, we had a couple officers that took it upon themselves to clean out our garage. Like they got like the Zamboni thing from the city garage and they were cleaning it. So I did a, a I hammed it up, you know, a big, big segment on that. Um, it's more about officers just cleaning up after themselves, mm -hmm. and stuff. but, but it's fun. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so it offers that those moments of levity. Um, one of the one of the things I'm most proud of that we do, um, and, and I'll have to go back in history, is uh, la uh, three years ago, it was everyone in rough times, right? Um, we had very low counts. Everybody was getting forced over every single night. Um, I'll tell you what, um, it was bad. The culture was bad. Mentality was bad. Like, it was just horrible. And I think I was just I was just a normal lieutenant at that time. Um, and I went to my other lieutenants. I said, we got to do something, man. We got to do something. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we decided um, was uh, we were big fran fans of the show uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. And uh, they do a holiday or a Halloween heist. Mm -hmm. We decided we're going to do a holiday heist. <laughs> and so we had we, we basically locked an elf in a, like a, a ammo can um, with a lock on it. And we had clues all throughout the city and usually the, the areas where we want officers to patrol more often. And they had to find these clues. Um, and then, uh, and we released a new clue of where these things were like every single day and they had to, uh, try to figure it out. And so not only did we get officers to patrol sections, we wanted to more often. Um, but, uh, we got a lot of buy-in and they weren't talking about being forced over. They're talking about where is that darn clue? And <laughs> what was Lieutenant Williams thinking about when he made that? Um, so we've done that for the, it's, it's caught a life of its own and we've had some great, um, endings to it. Um, so this will be our fourth year once we get to that point. And uh, that led into what I've been doing now in our position. We call it battle shifts. And we basically have a competition um, every month. Um, some of them are bizarre. Um, some of them are normal. Um, and it's shift for shift for shift. We have five shifts and we have uh, the records and we have the detective bureau all involved and they compete. So like this month, um, because we have EAA, which is a huge uh, um aeronautics uh, convention here in that near 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 us um we do uh, we're just doing a um paper airplane flying contest who can uh create and fly a paper airplane the mm -hmm. furthest so i get it it's dumb uh -huh. it has nothing to do a lot with law enforcement tactics but it's that it doesn't have to be depressing and sad every single day it doesn't like mm -hmm. like I, I know that that's, you know, we, we, we do talk about the mental health and stuff like that. And we always talk about it. Like, you know, we go through so much, we go through so much. We got into this job because it, it was a fun job. It, it still is a fun job. Like, I don't know, like, you know, we, I enjoyed working the streets. I'm in an office now, but there's, there's, we don't have to sit here and pretend that it's all doom and gloom. Like it is an enjoyable job and there's nothing wrong with adding a little bit of levity in those officers lives like they're still going out they're still you know I, i'm still pushing the tactics i'm still um being serious where we need to be serious but it doesn't have to be serious all the time yeah i and i saw that because i stumbled across your price is right video i thought that was awesome during briefing playing price is right and you had all the games and it, you had what what is it called plinko or whatever oh, yeah, we, was, had plinko. Yeah. We, had, we probably had too much fun with that one but uh that was <laughs> that was good um yeah that was we the, we had uh, videos. My my recruitment retention specialist did a very good like uh, you know like a Vanna or a Barker mm -hmm. like um, job of doing. Uh, it was great. Yeah, we got great responses off that. Yeah, yeah. So I, I like that you're thinking outside the box and you're not making it about all about the job. You're you're relieving the stress in other ways. I think which is something a lot of departments don't do. But you talk about having a, a, a partner recruitment specialist that's uh, going along this journey with you. What I want to do is uh, I did find a video where you introduced her to everyone. Uh, I'd like to go ahead. We're going to go ahead and show that video now. Uh, and then cool. we can talk a little bit about her position. Yeah, I know. You're just rolling your eyes right now. Welcome to the Final Act Police Department. I have some exciting news. We have a brand new recruitment retention specialist, Cami Vandermolen, with us today. Hey, everybody. So you guys get twice the fun now, uh, learning about the Final Act Police Department. And we thought it would be fun if uh, not only you had a way to get to know Cami a little bit better, 
But we saw we're gonna work good as a team, so Cammy came up with a really good test. So we're, here we go. We're gonna do rapid fire, back and forth questions, okay? And don't think about the answer, just shout it out. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, I'll start. All right. Favorite dinosaur? Velociraptor. Favorite donut? Glazer. Uh, favorite movie? Step, Step Brothers. Brothers. Favorite police department? Bondo PD. Police department. Did we just become best friends? Yeah. Wanna go do some recruiting? Yeah. Hey, come and visit us. With all right. <laughs> so that is your counterpart. <laughs> yep. Very like-minded. Yeah. Uh, you guys seem to get along very well. You seem to have the same mindset. Um, you guys do a lot of different other uh, videos as far as um, you ride along with officers, don't you? And yeah, we do. Uh, we do what's called carpool convos. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we kind of highlight a different officer and, and all across. And what we do is we tell our officers stories and where, where this kind of came from. Um, so when I was a school resource officer, I, uh, the school I was at, um, uh, they had some behavioral issues. I'm going to tell you that. And uh, I had, a, I, I had this thought um, that if the students really got to know their teachers and saw them as a person and not a teacher, that maybe they'd be a little less inclined to behave badly. Um, and so I made a video series. I did, I did videos at the when I was a school resource officer um, uh, called the teacher feature. And I featured a different teacher and we kind of did fun things with it. Um, and so I brought, I thought that would be cool um, to kind of bring uh, an out for the public. So um, we, we did it, carpool convos. Uh, Cammy uh, does most of, uh, she, she's done all of them actually, and uh, just rides with them, asks some questions, and it kind of tells the public these different stories. And and that's kind of our that's kind of our, our saying is many journeys, you know, one goal is mm -hmm. that we've we've got people um and they, as they should represent the public on all different dimensions. We've got, you know, we've got laterals that come in, we've got people that have had rougher childhoods. There's some people that have been inspired by some cop that they met in their childhood. Um, and that's what made them change, change over and why they wanted to inspire others. Like all those stories are coming out because everybody does have a story. And I, I think it's a way for our public to say, hey. We're not just these badge people. We're, we're, we're normal people with normal families. And maybe that will help them treat us with a little bit more respect as well. So we're going to continue on here with a, another video, because when you have new officers hired, whether they're lateral or entry level, you have a unique way of introducing them to the department, yep. uh, which I thought was great. So let's go. Uh, we're going to go ahead and replay this next video here. All right, so it, it goes on with what he does through the, through his, yep. his whole first day. Um, but for those that are just listening, basically, Ryan sets up a, a almost like a a very a sporting obnoxiously event. loud speaker. Yeah, it's like a sporting event. Like you're getting introduced at the beginning of a sporting event. It's awesome. And and his was just walking in. I've seen where they come running in, high fiving and all that. Um, and getting how how does how do you get everyone together like that? I've tried to get people together, and and the department doesn't always want to do that. I mean, um, well, first off, like once again, having to achieve with an open mind, um, because I was kind of thinking, and I'm this ages me. Do you guys remember that those around? Remember Saturn, the the, the automobile? Yeah, like if you bought a Saturn off the lot, they would cheer you off the lot, oh, yeah. like when you right. new Saturn or whatever. And I was kind of thinking like that. And I went to my chief and I said, because the chief's like, hey, we got a new hire, you know. Well, I said, chief, how about this for your first day? You don't just walk in. <laughs> you get played in like you're going in for the Chicago Bulls, at, you know, starting guard. And, of course, that was like our first like music that we used was the Chicago Bulls entrance music. And uh, 
and it's, it's awesome. Like, you know, it, it's cool. Like we are trying to get you accepted to show you that you are accepted in our culture, um, part of our team and that you're wanted here. And what better way to come in to the whole team kind of congratulate. Now, um, I have people start at eight when a lot of the records and the detectives and stuff and the admin are there. So that's how I get the numbers. I get the shift to come in. And I honestly think they enjoy it too. Like they like to see the newcomer. They like to see, you know, be in on the action. Um, it's come into a thing. Uh, um, I, I will, I will talk to them in advance. I say, okay, you got to tell me what your walk-in song is. Like, and, and some people will say, Hey, hey, yeah, I already got my walk-in song. Like, so the, the word is already out that they're going to get that walk-in song. So it's, it's a whole thing. And my whole thing is if you don't choose, I choose <laughs> and you probably ain't going to like what it's going to be, but, um, it's been a fun kind of unique thing that we do. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I love it. I love it. Yeah. And, uh, I saw one video where you had four starting in one day. So it was almost like announcing the starting lineup, which was, which was great. I mean, they just come yeah. in one right after another. So you're doing some great things and, and I want to talk about what your hiring process is, but before we do that, I got this one. This is the one that I just love the most. Um, and, and it's where you're just announcing, Hey, that, you know, process is coming up. So, uh, let's get out there and see how you get the word out to the community. Hey, where are you going? Fond du Railway. You need to apply today. If you apply at the Fond du Lac Police Department, you'll have the opportunity to train here. Apply now, August 23rd. I know why you're in a hurry. The Fond du Lac Police process is August 21st. Get your application in now. If you're fishing for a new job, apply at the Fond du Lac Police Department. Catch an application online at fblpolice.com. Did you know Fond du Lac has seven quick trips? Wouldn't you want to work in that city? Apply now at the Fond du Lac Police Department. The Fond du Lac Police Department is having the hiring process. August 21st. The Fond du Lac Police Department is having a hiring process August 21st. Hey, you're the white chief. Come to Fond du Lac and apply. Let the White House guide your way. The Fond du Lac Police Department is having a hiring process August 21st. Attention all you firefighters. The Fond du Lac Police Department is having a hiring process August 21st. Hey, you, get out of here. <laughs> That to me was the best his way in front of the fire department. So those that are just listening, he was, he was on an overpass screaming at cars, uh, parking lot in front of their training center, telling people he was at uh, their big park in town, Lakeside park, where there's a lot of fisher, uh, fishermen there, uh, trying to get them, uh, to me with the bullhorn, that is, that's awesome. That's <laughs> getting the word out however you can. <laughs> so the, the advantage, uh, obviously you can see like, we, we don't, our videos aren't like a hundred percent, like awesome grain, whatever, but we can churn them out like nothing. Like, um, that was pretty much shot in a day, you know, mm -hmm. like we get an idea. Um, Cammy and I go out, we shoot it. Um, she, she goes along with my biz bizarre ideas and, you know, we can edit it together and get it out there like right away. So it's the turnover is great. And we're getting a lot of content. Like, um, sometimes like we are right now, the chief is backed up because he can't, he doesn't want to release everything all at once. So it's like, mm -hmm. we're, we're waiting for some of our content to get out there. Um, because we don't want to release it all at once, but, uh, no, it's fun. Um, I did a recruiting video about two years ago where, um, I talked about all the great things about our apartment, but I stressed how close we were to quick trip, which is our, our, our gas station that, uh, you know, has everything like everyone's got, you know, like, a um, uh, like it could be a come and go or, a, or, or a wah wah or whatever. And, uh, and uh, that one um, went really viral, and I made it on um, uh, one of the law enforcement sites as one of the top recruiting videos. So that means uh, where I go, I'm still known as the quick trip guy. So, oh, uh, well, it's the quick trip guy around Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm going to tell you, I mean, being a fan of quick trip, and I'm going to be in, uh, in Wisconsin next week, I can't wait to get the quick trip. I get off the airplane, that's the first place I'm going is quick trip to get my, <laughs> my donuts and my cookies. So... <laughs> No, it's, it's funny. Like I got, I have like an idea board of all these other ideas of videos yet to shoot. And, um, so we have a lot of other great ideas out there. Uh, if I don't write it down, I forget about it. So, um, that's, there's, there's more to come. 
Um, and uh, as long as I have like a supportive chief and a, an organization that is all for it, uh, I'm ready for it. And um, it, it's fun. I, I enjoy it. I actually, uh, I started out as a criminal justice major in college and I did change to a radio TV film major for a while. Like I was very interested in that kind of stuff. Um, and I went back to criminal justice uh, and uh, obviously that was my, my first passion, but now to kind of work in a little bit of my second passion in there has been great. Yeah. And it seems to be benefiting you, you and your department very well. So let's look at uh, what your hiring process is. What does it take to get hired um, by the Fond du Lac police department? Well, I, on, on, on that question, it's uh, what everybody's looking for is competence and character, right? Like um, that's, that's what we want. We want good, competent people with, with good character. Now, um, as, as you know, we're, we're hiring younger people. So um, experience, we'd love to have it. But if you don't, well, as long as you have that competence and character, I can build you, I can help build you because it takes you too um, into a great police officer um, for our organization. Now, beyond that, you know, you have to be, uh, you know, all the other, you have to have 60 college credits in Wisconsin. Um, you, you have to be over 18, have a valid driver's license and, and a decent background. But we've really streamlined our process too. And I think a lot of people are doing that now, um, really streamlining it. And what we did is we kind of looked at what are we actually learning? We used to do a full day assessment center and we get through this full day assessment center and we might, we'd uh, eliminate maybe two people that would have been eliminated on day one of a background anyway. So we're wasting all this time. We're adding another week. We're we're doing all this stuff for something that would have been washed out anyway. What was the point of that? We're not learning anything from it. I, I liked it because you got to know the candidates a little bit more, but there's going to be time and place for that. So our hiring process is basically this. Uh, we do a, a short, um, it's a citizen panel. So our citizens know what they're getting as an officer. We do an officer panel and we do a written test. That's that's all for our first uh, our first process. It probably takes maybe an hour and a half at the most. Um, then uh, if you move on, then you have your chief's interview and then we get all your stuff ready for your background stuff. Um, if you pass the chief's interview, um, so and they're usually like a week apart. So one week you do the process, the next week I get you in at the chief's interview. And then uh, we get in the backgrounds, which take about two weeks in there. Uh, if you're doing well, we schedule your physical and your psych. And after that, you're all said and done. I can get an officer through in about a month, a month and a half, depending on how many we have in the backgrounds. The backgrounds are what slow it down, but mm -hmm. probably the most important part of the whole process. Right, right. Do you do anything different with laterals? Do you streamline it even more for laterals or... Yeah, way faster for laterals. Uh, it's pretty much a two and a half hour day. Um, they come in, we do the chief's interview the same day, we do everything the same day. And if they pass the uh, the two and a half hour um, day, then they go right to backgrounds. So a um, lot of stuff is, uh, yeah, just very streamlined for that. Um, and we've been lucky with laterals. We've, we've gotten a lot. I think we, are, we have a pretty beneficial pay scale for laterals. Um, which is nice. There's like a sweet spot that they can come in. And the, the cool thing from my point, point of view is we have these laterals and I like to hear how other departments are. And the one thing I'm hearing over and over from these laterals are like, like the culture here is so much better. Like we've had people from other departments come in and they get called into the, the, the first line supervisor's office. So that's our lieutenants, our lieutenant's office. And they are dreading it. Like they are like, they are like, Hey, no, just want to say, Hey, you could try to do this a little bit better. He's like, so am I getting uh, written up? No, no, we're just, we're just letting you, you know, what you did was fine, but, you know, consider maybe doing this. So, I mean, some people still work in those societies where it's like, you know, we're written up. It's got to be paper, 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 paper on every single thing. We're trying to inspire people to do the right thing, not um, make them do the right thing just because they're a fear of getting in trouble for doing the wrong thing. There, there, there's a big difference in that is, uh, you know, if you have people that are just scared of doing the wrong thing, that they're just going to do the bare minimum to not do that. But if you inspire them to do the right thing, they're going to go above and beyond. Right, right. Are you guys doing any hiring incentives like uh, some departments around the country are paying extra for laterals to come in? And are you guys doing anything like that? No, we have, we have, uh, we have not done that and we haven't really had to, like mm -hmm. we've hired uh, 20 people. <laughs> um, two of them are records uh, from last July to this July. So we, we were kind of at that max where like, 
we probably couldn't take any more because, I mean, we got to get all those people through field training. We only have so many field trainers and all. This. So we're taking on about as much as we can chew at this point, mm -hmm. um, which is a good thing. It's a steady stream. Um, when you drink from a fire hose, you can miss things, right? Like right. When you had a, all those influx of people. Um, and then you got to know what what's 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 driving them. Are you coming here for the money? Like that's I get it. I like money. Mm -hmm. Everybody likes money. Um, how much money is it going to take you to go to a cancer culture? Like how much money do you want to work in a cancer culture? Like, that's great. I could go someplace, get a 10 grand bonus for going there. But if I'm miserable for the next five years of my life, would I pay back that 10 grand to be in a better place to enjoy going into work? I would, I would in a second. And uh, so that's what we do is uh, we put all of that investment into investing into our employees, into our culture. And we're hoping that that's going to retain these people once they get here. Wow. That's, that, I mean, it, that you don't have to do that. That is, that's awesome. Um, you know, cause again, you're right. Are, are they coming there for the money or are they, do they want to be there for the culture? And you've created a culture. It sounds like that your officers are enjoying. So, um, this has been so insightful, um, as far as what you guys are doing at Fond du Lac police department, um, to, uh, keep the, the positive culture going for your officers. Um, and I think it's good for our listeners to hear that. Um, those that are, uh, Experienced officers looking for a change. This is a, a good opportunity for you. They still have some spots open. So, I mean, you can get in their process. Uh, anything else that you have, uh, Lieutenant Williams, that you'd like to um, push out about your department before we go ahead and wrap things up? I, I just feel like, uh, like I said before, we're a department not too big. Um, you know everybody. You know a little bit about everybody. But we're safe. We've had some critical instances in our past. And um, I think there is a separation in a lot of uh, organizations where um, they don't have that. It's not not if but when mentality. They they kind of live in denial. And so they they save money here and there because they just they might not think it's going to happen. Well, we've had critical instances. We know it's going to happen. We know there's going to be another time that it's going to happen. So what do we do from this point to then? Like if we could go back in time, if we know tomorrow is going to be that instant, what would we do today differently? And we would prepare our butts off, right? Mm -hmm. Why not do that right now? Prepare our butts off for when that that incident happens, that our officers can do it as safe as we can. And that's just not like with tools and technology. That's with mindset. Right. Um, the old days of going hut, hut, hut through a house because of, you know, this or that. Those are those are done. We're smarter than that now. We've got different tools to use now. So we don't take our officers lives lightly and we are invested in them and we know them. We know them. They're they're the person next door, right? Like we pass them in the hallway all the time. We know everybody. And uh, I, I just think it's a great um, department. And I don't know anybody that's doing what we're doing right now. I really don't. Like I care. And that's the biggest thing. Like mm -hmm. I care about all my employees. I try to get them as much training as possible. I try to do as much as I can for them. I pour my heart out for them. Our chief pours their, his heart out for them. And he, he, our chief will be the first text message you get on your birthday. Like, where do you find that? Like, mm -hmm. and that even goes to some of our retired officers. Like, I mean, it's, it's a great um, place to work. And, uh, and I just think we have a unique thing going. And um, I, I know our laterals coming in. No, uh, because, because they've told, but uh, I, some of our, our officers that have started here are like, Oh, well, like this is just normal. No, it's not <laughs> 23 mm -hmm. years. says It's not. And we're able to do it. So. Yeah. I'm well, kind of wondering before we go, um, what are you offering to to new hires and laterals as far as salary and, and benefits and uh, days off, vacation time, all that kind of stuff um, and relative to the parts of the country? Because Donovan and I talked to different departments from all over the country and the West Coast is is relative to how much it costs to live yeah. on the West Coast. So you cannot say, oh, they make this much money here and then they make this much money here relative to where you're at what do, what are the offerings to so to we we go off use years of experience so if they have seven years in california and they come here they would come at our seven year step so they would get that wow. pay if they had 20 years experience they'd come in at what our 20 year step would be um the only thing we don't match like um exactly would be vacation um they they get three weeks um off the bat they get sick time off the bat um so we make it as beneficial as we can. Um, we'll try to keep everybody happy because they're still a new officer as well. Um, 
and then cost of living in Wisconsin is far less. <laughs> so yeah. um, mm -hmm. your money is going to carry well here. So if you're saving it over there on the West Coast, you can come over here. You can live on a nice lake home. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, uh, you know, Ken, I don't know. We've talked to a lot of different recruiters um, in, in, you know, these podcasts. Uh, I don't know that I've talked to one that has so much passion for the department. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm that Lieutenant Williams has for Fond du Lac Police Department. I mean, you can tell that he loves working there. And I think that says a lot about the department. You got any other questions for him, Ken? No, I was just, I'm impressed by the leadership uh, from Lieutenant Williams and the fact that you mm -hmm. have to, uh, going back to the to the incentives, the, the bonuses that people, uh, Lieutenant uh, Donovan and I keep track of all this stuff. And in California mm -hmm. alone, it's out of control. The Seattle PD was offering fifteen thousand. They they didn't get any. I can't say they got many people. Mm -mm. There's a department in California that was offering um, seventy five thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and they were using the money. They were getting the money from the officers that had left, and so that culture is bad. And then now, just recently, within the last month, there's a department that is offering a hundred thousand dollars for laterals. Mm -hmm. But you have to ask yourself, is this a department, why are they having to offer that big <laughs> of an right. incentive? Where your department, it's because you care so much about the culture and the people that work there, you don't really have to offer anything because people want to work there. And I think that's the message that we need to get out mm -hmm. for your department that, that you don't need to do that because you love your officers, the community loves the officers, and people want to work there. And I, I think a lot of that is giving some of yourself and you know, not everyone's willing to do that. I understand that. Um, yeah, I had an officer tell me that, uh, um, that he had big plans on July 4th, he was gonna propose to his wife and uh, he was, uh, he was a little anxious because he had someone working for him, but he didn't know if that was going to work out that he could still get forced that day. And I remember uh, I said, I said, I'm, I'm going camping this weekend, but take take this number down. So I gave him my personal phone number and I said, listen, if it doesn't work out, I'm coming in. I said, I will come in and work for you. That day is too important to you. Like I can I can miss a little bit of camping. I will come in and work that shift for you so you can have your your biggest moment of your life. You know, one of the biggest moments in your life engagement mm -hmm. and um. And I feel like that, you know, was so impactful on that that individual to have someone willing to do that for them. And I think that means so much. Now, lucky me, I didn't have to come in. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but I, I I don't know if everyone's willing to do that. Um, mm -hmm. But I am because I know that, you know, life's made of those small moments. Right. And it's either going to be the department that made me come in and work and miss my engagement or it's going to be the department that went through great efforts so that I could have this special moment. And I think that's what makes us different. And, and that says a lot, you know, so uh, I, I, I want to thank you uh, for being on today, Lieutenant Williams. Um, what's the best way for people to find out about your department? Where can they get the most information? FDLpolice.com is our website. Um, look at our Facebook. We updated a lot. If you ever just scroll, like I'm telling you, go to our Facebook page and just scroll and you're going to see how, how much our chief believes in investing in the community. Um, we're out there all about. I was out giving meals away at Culver's the other day. Um, it, it, it's great how we're reaching out. And then uh, check out our YouTube too. Uh, I talk every week uh, on a, a series called Behind the Badge, kind of our own kind of podcast type deal. Um, and you can find out about us and our mentality and, and everything about us. So there's a lot out there in our media, Facebook, YouTube, and then fdlpolice.com for information on how to apply and our contract is online. So if you wanna see um, what our lateral program is and what you'd be coming in on, what steps, it's all written out there, scroll to the end of the contract. That's where all the lateral stuff is. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, I wanna thank you, uh, Lieutenant Williams for being with us today. Uh, Ken, I gotta thank you for letting me take control of this one. Uh, oh, and hopefully bet. we're gonna have uh, more recruiters coming up. So uh, if there's any uh, uh, recruiters out there who wanna be on the, the podcast, just go ahead. Uh, send us an email. It can be Donovan at policebackground.net or Ken at policebackground.net. And we will see you next time. Thanks for having me.
Thanks for listening to the Police Applicant Podcast. We are the premier police background prep site in the U.S. and Canada. For more information on scheduling your police background consultation, go to policebackground.net. Also, please leave us a review on iTunes.